G'day everyone and welcome to Chris Rankin's Music Crush. It's been a long time, I know, since I've done a video. Uh, I saw Andy Cloudy Milder's uh, video, top 10 album artwork covers uh, that aren't Iron Maiden and I couldn't resist coming on. Um, so you never know, this might spur me back on to getting videos going a bit more uh, a regular occurrence. Now, I, I didn't think I would do a top 10 I would say a good 60% of my collection have fantastic album covers. Being a big technical death metal, death metal, progressive metal, progressive lover, uh, that's what that sort of music is known for as well as its great album covers. So I've just gone through and, and picked a bit of a selection. These are not all the album artwork that I love, otherwise this video would be three hours long. So I'm going to breeze through them too as well. I'll try not to get too much in depth about each of these albums as well because it will still be rather long. It's mainly obviously to show off the artwork. Um, so we'll get started. First of all, from Bandung, Indonesia, the metal city uh, in West Java. We have the band Jassad, as you all probably know. This is one of my favorite bands of all time. Incredible live. The only time in the last 20 years, I've got bad knees, so the only time in the last 20 years I've been in the mosh pit, Jassad was the band to get me in there. Love this band. Uh, this is one of my favourite albums of all time, would be in my top 10 for sure. But look at that artwork. That's what we're centering on today. So we've got an old uh, ancient Garuda there, but an evil looking Garuda. And what I love about this is it it's sort of, uh, looking at traditional Indonesian art. So the, the, the title of this album is called Rebirth of Jati Sunda, and Jati Sunda was um, an ancient um, Sundanese kingdom in West Java. And uh, so we've got traditional Indonesian art, just death metal style, which I love. And even though I'm not really talking about songs today, I can't help. That is easily in my top five favorite metal songs of all time, Siliwangi. Check it out, there's a great video of them doing it live at Bloodstock in England. Just one of the best songs ever made. So yes, uh, Jasad, Rebirth of Ajati Sunda. Look at that artwork, so good. Next up, uh, as you all probably know, one of my favorite musicians of all time is Dan Swano. Uh, Bloodbath, also Edge of Sanity, Nightingale, Panthimonium, uh, you name it. But he also had this band for a while called Infest Dead. Now they had two albums uh, called Jesus, Satan and Hellfuck. Uh, and then they released this um, 2016 so it's like a, com a compilation, but not really. It's just those two albums are repackaged into this one package called Satanic Serenades. And what I love about this artwork, you can see it there. So you've got the demons there, but they're, they're playing all the different musical instruments. So you can see you've got the pipes, you've got the keys over here in the background. Just love it. I mean, how metal is that? It just doesn't get much more metal. Such... Such a good album too. If you don't know this band, Infest Dead, just brilliant, black, extremely evil uh, death metal. Just so good. Up next, from Italy, technical death metal, Hideous Divinity. I love this band so much. If you don't know this band, they are so good. Heavy technical death metal, just so good. Uh, from Italy. And this is their debut. This was... 2012, um, I got this from my very good friend uh, Tito in Rome, Italy. Uh, early on, he was looking after this band and he suggested them to me back in 2012. And I bought this from the band, loved it. But look at that artwork. What's it called? Uh, a, I think it's called Abasence Rising, is that right? Abasence Rising, Abasence Rising, that's terrible. I normally try to do the, my best to pronounce things, but 
being a big sci-fi fan and fantasy fan and all that sort of stuff, you're going to see a little bit of a theme today with album art with it. I love, but I love that. I also like, I don't know why, I quite like metal albums that have a little bit of green in it too. Um, we always used, we're always seeing red and black in a lot of metal albums, but it's good to see a bit of green and that's just so cool. I love that. Next up, I'll take this out of the CD case because the case is... Uh, Got a bit of a crack in it. I can't find new CD case, dual cases anywhere to replace something that got cracked. But uh, the band Hypocrisy, Swedish melodic death metal band, and the album is Virus. Look at that. How cool is that? Um, when was this? 2005? Yeah, 2005. This is my favourite Hypocrisy album. Uh, uh, I think this is like their 10th album, something like that. And that artwork, how cool is that? As I say, I'll try and uh, skip through these as quick as I can. I've got a few to get through. This one, a little bit different from a lot of the stuff that I'm showing today. I just love this because it's so quirky. Hard rock, uh, progressive rock band from a London, England. One and done band called Fuzzy Duck. The name of the album is Fuzzy Duck. 1971 this came out. It's their debut. It's the only one they ever did. And look at that artwork. I mean, doesn't that just make you want to check it out? I love this album. If you want to check them out, um, check out the one song called Country Boy. The whole album is excellent, but the song Country Boy, fantastic. Next up, I don't need to tell you too much about this band, but I love that cover. Shovel-headed Kill Machine. I mean, that just says... Get out of the way, seriously. Easily my favourite Exodus, Exodus album. Some might be surprised at that, but I love the riffs. This this album has a thousand money riffs on it. They're just all so catchy and heavy, and I love Rob Dukes. I'm actually a big fan of the Rob Dukes era, and this will be controversial, but um, he, he's my favourite vocalist for Exodus. He just gave a bit more aggression and a bit more of that heaviness. Perhaps it's my love of death metal that maybe likes this, but look at that cover. It just doesn't get much better than that. You want to sell T-shirts, you have that as an album cover, that'll sell T-shirts for sure. I mean, who even knows what that thing is, but it just looks nasty and very cool. Next up, um, being a big Battletech player uh, from back in the early 80s, Battletech, the... the uh, the tabletop uh, game, um, sort of role play, not really, no, role play's wrong. Tabletop dice game with the, the battle mechs and all. Anything with, to do with mechs or any of that kind of thing, I absolutely adore. Uh, so when Dismember put out this album, Massive Killing Capacity, and you've got that on the front, that's it, sold. Nothing more needs to be said. Now, I love this album anyway. It is actually my favourite Dismember album. But that artwork, I mean, it just really doesn't get any better than that. 1995, top-notch Swedish death metal. Love this band. Next up, from Poland, decapitated. Look at that, organic hallucinosis. I mean, is that how evil does that look? I mean, it's just a head. It's like a cyborg head. Just so good. My favourite decapitated album. That'll get a little. That's a little bit controversial. I do love the first album. I mean, the first album is ridiculous. One of the greatest tech death albums ever made, and it was made by four guys that were between fourteen and seventeen years old. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than this. Uh, than that, I mean. And but I do love this a little bit more. Of course, this was the last album to feature uh, V Tech, who the amazing drummer that passed away. And it was the one and only album to feature uh, Covan as well on vocals. Um, amazing, amazing album. Look at that artwork. I got a t-shirt of this. How can you resist that? Next up, great album and incredible artwork. Alan Land, obviously Russell, Alan and Yorn Land. Uh, the Battle, this was the first album they did. All of their albums have these in incredible artwork. Uh, so I, but I just went with the first one. How good does that look? So good. Um, when was this? Uh, 2005, I think. Two th uh, hang on. 
No, I can't read that, it's too small. I'm gonna guess and say 2005, I reckon that's about right. Brilliant album, so good. Sort of US power metal, heavy metal, uh, great stuff. Next up, the band 1914 from uh, the Ukraine, yeah. Uh, the Blind, yeah, The Blind Leading the Blind. Look at that. I mean, Grim Reapers are always good, but that Grim Reaper, it, there's no jokey cartoon about that Grim Reaper. That one's not mucking around at all. Magnificent sort of blackened death doom metal. Fantastic. Uh, this album came out 2018. They had an album come out this year. Also really, really good. Fantastic. Look at that. Um, this band has two entries into this. From San Diego, Cattle Decapitation. Now look at that guy. There's always a little bit of humour in their stuff. Obviously they're very much about animal rights and, and anti-animal cruelty. When they started out they were all vegans. I think there's only about two or three of them now that are still vegans. In other words, the other ones that were vegans are no longer with the band. So everything, their lyrics and everything is all about anti-humans and... and, and looking after animals and so forth. So this is called Karma Bloody Karma. And as you can see, we've got this cow who uh, is spiritual, but uh, rather mean as well. Love that. Brilliant album, absolutely brilliant album. And then this, this is one of my favorite albums of all time. Monolith of Inhumanity. I mean, look at that. This sum, that picture sums up what this album is all about. Absolute, pure, high-octane rage and aggression. Uh, and just But lots of hooks as well. That's what's very clever about this album is raw and... Not raw, that's not quite right. As aggressive and nasty and full-on as this is. There's actually a lot of hooks and very catchy as well. But look at that artwork. There's no mucking around. You know exactly what you're going to get with that. And boy, they are so good live. Travis Ryan has to have one of the best growls live. The thing I love about him is he changes it up. It's not always just the one monotone growl. There's lots of different things and techniques that he does. It makes it very interesting. I'm going to take this one out of the cover. I do love this artwork. The, I suppose the only negative is it's a little bit dark. So when you look at it through the, the jewel case, it's a bit dark. But this is the band The Absence. And the album is called Riders of the Plague. This is their second album. Um, yeah, second album, 2007 from memory. They're from Tampa. But look at that. It's sort of like an, an angel crossed with a, a dead soldier sort of thing. Just so good. That's how I got into this band. I saw that, that album cover CD and went, yep, that'll do me. So it's funny, they're from Tampa, Florida, and uh, they quite often get missed in the shadows of all the other big sort of Tampa death metal bands, but oh, they're very good. A little bit more melodic and they and a little bit more at thrash at times. Um, yeah, just a little bit. Next up, Aborted. They have so many great album covers. They really do, but I love that. Retro gore, and I love how the guy is looking in through the mirror at himself and seeing he's, that he's being operated on. Uh, notice how the old, um, oh, I forget what they're called now. I had one as a kid in the 80s where you'd flick through it and look at the different pictures. So he's got one on there. Obviously retro gore, so it's meant to be as if you're looking at all things retro. But look at the detail on that. Just so good. As I say, aborted always have good album covers. Uh, this one. Savage, their second album. Love this sort of sci-fi mixed, you know, fighter pilot. You're not really quite sure. This is their second album called Hyperactive, 1985. New Age of British heavy metal band. Although this one is a little more polished and poppy and catchy. Um, but that artwork, so good. Love it. Next up. Tech Death, as I say, you want good album covers, just go through the, the, the sub-genre of technical death metal, you'll find it. This band is one of the best to ever do it. Spawn of Possession. This album, um, 2000, 
12, I reckon it was. It was their final album called Incurso, featuring their great guitarist, one of my favourite guitarists of all time, Christian Moonsner. Uh, this is just a masterclass on technical death metal, just one of the best ever made. And look at that album cover. I mean, just so good. Uh, this band, excellent band, very underrated. They only ever did two albums. Progressive metal band from Italy called Pathas Ray. This is my favourite. Both albums are great. The name escapes me of their first album now. Um, I like this one better and look at the album art as well. I mean, what the hell are those things? But it looks awesome. You know it's progressive metal. When you see a, an album cover like that, it's going to be progressive metal. A very strong chance. Really, really good. Um, the best way to describe Pathos Ray, probably the, the only one that's close would be, I guess, Symphony X. A little bit of Symphony X. Um, key, there's some keyboards there, and they're, uh, they sound sort of spacey, a little bit high-tech. But, yeah, Symphony X is probably about the the best comparison that I can think of. There's another one that's right there, but I can't think of it right now and I don't want to take too long. So um, next up, Mystic Prophecy, another band that has lots of great album covers. One of my favourite power metal bands of all time. In fact, quite often I have said that they are my number one. They do incorporate speed and thrash metal in. They're certainly one of the more heavier, aggressive power metal bands. Um, originally started out in Germany, but they've got members from all parts of the world. And this album is called Satanic Curses. Look at that. Absolutely brilliant. Um, 2007 was this album. Look at that. How good does that look? Yeah, so good. Love it. Vader, another band that I could put quite a few of their albums in, um, but I picked out my two Oh, hang on, two? I mean, no, I've got three. <laughs> I thought I only had two of theirs. I've just seen the other one in the pile. Vader, another pan band from Poland. Poland just does death metal so well, and they really do. One of my favourite bands on the planet. One of the greatest names of a metal band of all time. Name your band after one of the, the most famous villains. Great idea. So Vader, this is their EP, 2006. Pretty sure it was called the art of war and like i said being a big fan of battletech and mechs and so forth you've got a, a big mech on the front where sort of all guns blazing so so good love it to bits looks so good i've just remembered another one that i don't think i pulled out Yeah, no, I don't think I've pulled it out of the rack. Oh, well, I'll have to leave it. If you get to look it up, it's um, Striker, Canadian, pretty sure the Canadian band, Armed to the Teeth. I'm not going to go through and look for it now, but it's a, it's like a, a T-Rex that's like a skeleton, but it's been mechanised and turned into a mech, and it's got all these guns on the side of it. looks so good. Um, another Vader album. Tibi et Igni, incredible album. Uh, either my second or third favourite Vader album. It's got one of my favourite songs on the, of all time on here called Hex and Kessel. But look at that. I mean, you know what you're going to get, right? There's no mucking around when you see that. And that's what Vader are. Vader, you just know, you know exactly what you're going to get with Vader. Up next, one of the most frightening albums of all time the band is called wormed i've shown this before uh from spain they're all about deep space terror and wormhole travel and interstellar travel and all sorts of things the album is called Krigsu, and look at that you've got some sort of uh, uh space vessel on the front cover there just brilliant i love all this sort of stuff so that's an easy one for me but the album is as good as, as the cover and just a, a frightening album of, of technical death metal. Another Vader album, uh, De Profundis, their second album. 
Um, for a long time, this was my favorite Vader album. Litany is my number one, but this is there with uh, Tibby et Igni as well. I mean, I don't really need to say much, do I? Look at that. I mean, what a band. The sound, the songs, the attitude, the name, and then the artwork. They just tick all the boxes. Band from France, Technical Death Metal, Pit Bulls in the Nursery. And this album is their first one called Lunatic. And look at that guy on the front. I mean, you just don't want to fuck with this guy. Look at that at all. How good is that? From France. Uh, they do incorporate some like jazz fusion. So they're technical death metal, progressive death metal. And there's some really little quirky bits of jazz fusion and jazzy bits as well. An amazing band. Second album, not quite as good as this. And I never bothered buying it because I just didn't really... Love it. Um, I don't think they're around anymore. They're either on hold or completely gone. But this album, oh, the the sort of title track, I guess, is called um, Lunatic Factory. If you want to hear what these guys are all about, listen to that. Oh, <laughs> so good. Now, this band, this band, I'm going to show a few of the pages, not just the artwork, but the CD booklet. So the band is called Cult of Fire. They are a Czech band. Uh, I can't even pronounce the name. I will try and show it to you. Uh, there's the name of the album. Every different album they bring out, they um, write it in a different language and a different script. So that's the name of the album. So if you can read Sanskrit, uh, you'll know what that says. This is brilliant. It's a mix of atmospheric black metal, black metal and Hindustani classic music as well. That artwork should tell you what you're in for. And I'm going to quickly just show you a little bit of the booklet because that is also incredible. This band is uh, unique. There's nothing else like them. So here we go. Look at this all through the book. The artwork is just ridiculous. Look at that gear. Look at this. Now, if you're not sure what you might get with this band, decipher these pictures and that'll help. Incredible band. I absolutely love this band so, so much. No one else like them. Now, on to records. Let me quickly show you some records. Uh, I've got... From 2020, the band Undeath from Rochester, New York. Uh, the band, uh, the album Lesions of a Different Kind. This came out in 2020. I love this. It's a little bit weird. It's a kind of a little bit silly as well. Like you know, the artwork's not the greatest ever, I guess. But I don't know why. Just the way that that guy is like meeting with this thing that's been spawned from here, and it's like, yeah, good day. Nice to meet you. And he yeah, said, yep, well, I'm going to take your head from your body. <laughs> Just, And then you got all these guys that probably had previously met this guy. And that's how they've ended up. Just there. So good. Brilliant, brilliant death metal. They've got an album that just came out this year. And will probably be finishing in my uh, end of year countdown, top 100. So good. Undeath, lesions of a different kind. No way I couldn't include this. Uriah Heap, Abominog. Yeah, it's not as heavy as their uh, earlier 70s albums, but I still love this album a lot. Really, really enjoy it. And that album artwork. I, I think, in some ways, the album artwork is what did this album mean a little bit. Because you look at that artwork, you think, my God, this is going to be, you know, Uriah Heap's gone uh, death metal on us. And it's not. A very, very accessible, very melodic, very catchy stuff. But that artwork, one of the best ever. No doubt about it. Uh, coming up next, I have to be careful because I've got the record inside. I don't want to show you the gatefold and the record falls out. From last year, band uh, from Sweden called Vokonis. I think that's how you pronounce it. V O K. I N S V, v O K no V O K O N I S sorry, and the album is called Odyssey. Now they're sort of a progressive 
metal, stone and metal uh, band. This album also finished, uh, this album finished quite high in my end of year list last year. And I'm going to show you the gatefold. I know we're doing album artwork covers, but the gatefold's pretty cool as well. But look at that. It's nice to see a metal album that's just not all black and dark as well, even though I love all that sort of stuff, but just gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Absolutely love that. Now, I knew I had to be careful of that one because I keep the... When I can, I keep with the gatefolds. I don't, I don't put it in the actual gatefold. This album artwork I loved so much that back when I was in... Uh, late primary mid to late primary school um and i wore a jacket with a big back patch on that we all do it was the main back patch uh that was the main back patch because i love it so much zz top afterburner and i love this album i really do and i love all zz top but i really really love this album a lot i don't mind that it was a little bit more 80 sound and all i mean sleeping bag is my favorite zz top song of all time there's no doubt about it but look at that i mean how can i not love that the car turning into a spaceship the eliminator turning into the afterburner unreal next up spaceships space anytime you do that there's half a chance with me ian gillen band clear air turbulence love this album i love that it's kind of progressive and yeah, really interesting interesting album just uh only got six songs love this i love all the, i love all the gean and i love it's not gean it's not <laughs> spanish uh i love all the gillen and i love all the ian gillen band as well in fact pretty much anything ian gillen's been associated with i love but look at that how good is that so good Next, uh, I'm not giving so much information because I'm trying to fly through them pretty quick. Um, from Germany, Protector, the Death Thrash Band. Love this band. That really early uh, death metal sound from Thrash, late 80s, early 90s. This is Leviathan's Desire, which was... Um, boy, I want to say... 19... 90 i might be wrong but i think it's 1990 but anyway it's around then uh, but look at that i mean who knows what the hell that thing is and then he's got a dog uh, you know, if i'm the dog i i don't think i'd be giving it a go the only problem is yeah the dog's not really looking at him i've only i've only just sort of noticed that now the dog's i don't know but the dog's barking off in the wrong direction but I mean, it's just so weird and kind of evil and and grim and slimy and so good. Like the band. If you don't know, if you don't know who Protector is and you don't listen, have you have never listened to Protector? That album, Gollum, um, the one after Gollum, I can't remember, and uh, Shedding of Skin, flawless. All so good. Another great one. I'm pretty sure I couldn't find it. And I haven't bothered doing all the artists, so my apologies to the artists that have done all these great work, I, but I just didn't want this video to be too long. I think this is a Dan Seagrave uh, artwork. It looks like his. He's done a lot of technical death metal and death metal album covers. So this is Seance, uh, Forever Laid to Rest. Absolutely brilliant album. 1992, this is. Uh, and look at that, so evil. You've got the evilness there. You've got all the evil spirits coming out. Um, yeah, so good. That's what happens when you do a seance, this. Up next, anyone who knows me knows how much I love this band. One of the best bands to see live. I never miss them when they come to town. When you see them in a good-sized uh, club, it doesn't really matter that it's a club or whatever, but you need it to be indoors. You need there to be good lighting. You're just immersed by this wall of sound and lighting and all. And of course, I'm talking about my sugar. I'm not talking too much about the band, but that artwork. This is my favourite album by them, Chaosphere. Now, this is a reissue. Both the 
original artwork, which is a little bit different, had more purple and a little bit of green from memory in the, the pick. This is the reissue that um, uh, Nuclear Blast did. I picked up quite a few of these. They reissued them on on vinyl. Uh, look at that, my sugar chaosphere. One of my favorite songs of all time is on here. New Millennium Cy Cyanide Christ, as good as it gets. So, so good. Up next, Nazareth. Kind of weird that they have an album cover that looks like this. I love Nazareth a lot. Uh, but another one, a little bit like a Abominog, that um, it's an excellent album. I love it. Um, it's probably my favorite Nazareth album, but it certainly looks a lot more metal than it actually is. Um, you know, this is good bluesy, sort of hard rock stuff, but look at that. And this is, uh, yeah, this is Rodney Matthews. Uh, there's a few Magnum Rodney Matthews. I think Andy Cloudy Mile will talk about Rodney Matthews, and but I couldn't help it. I just still wanted to bring it out. Such a great, great pick. Next up, I have Aaron the Metal Theologian to thank for finding this album because I had no idea about it and his recommendation meant I went out and got it. Oblivion Night. I mean, look at that. I mean, if, if the music on this record was atrocious, you'd probably take the record out and then just hang this up on your wall anyway. It's just a picture. It's that good. But the music is fantastic. So this is kind of like a, a reissue compilation, I guess, of demos that they did in 1987 and demos that they did in 1990. And then this all got put together and... Uh, then later on released and this was limited to 500 copies and this is number 465 really 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 good really good heavy metal speed metal probably the best way to describe it but i mean come on next up jefferson starship they've had some good album covers too some silly ones as well uh but this look at that Jefferson's Starship, Spitfire. Um, this was 19... Oh, so the 1975, 19, 1976. Yeah, 1976. Brilliant. Probably not my favourite Jefferson Starship album. Um, well, I'll be pretty close, but yeah, really good. Really good with the album artwork, which is what we're talking all about today. Look at that. Unreal. I'm very close, actually, to getting all the Jefferson Airplane, Jefferson Starship, and Starship. There's only about one or two of the Starship, and I think there's only one of the Airplane and one of the Jefferson Starship that I haven't got. So I'm getting pretty close to getting everything. Next up, this is raw, nasty speed metal. Uh, Division Speed. Um, from... No, I was going to say Scotland, but they're not. No, I think they're from Germany anyway. Um, but look at that. Really, really good. Now, they've only ever made one album so far. This was 2015. Yeah. Look at that. How great. I love how it's like a painting as well, but you can see how it's just mass carnage. And then on the back there, the carnage continues. Really good. It is speed metal, but it's it's quite raw, and uh, you know you you could sort of give a little bit of a black metal tag to it. Saying it's black metal is wrong, uh, but it's speed metal with a little bit of that blackened coming in there. You know, there's a little bit of if you like something like Hell Ripper. There's certainly a little bit of that coming in in through there as well. Um, so good. There's another band that I can't think of right now. Um, another one man band like Hell Ripper that puts out like three albums a year. I can't remember. Been working so much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm a little bit, the brain's a bit fried. All right, next up, DVNE, or I've seen it pronounced as June. Now, this band is from Scotland. That's what I was getting mixed up with. They're from Edinburgh, Scotland. Um, progressive atmospheric sludge metal band. This came out. Uh, would have been... Oh, this was last year. Yeah, of course it was. Last year. Now, look at that. 
How good is that? The title of the album, hang on, let me take it out of the sleeve. I've got to be careful because the records are in here once again as well. I can't remember if... Oh, yes, I did. I wanted to show you the gatefold. So the, the title of the album is called... Uh, Etiman Inca. I think that's how you say it. Uh, there. I don't know if you can see that too well, but look at that. So let me just take the records out. I don't want them to fall while I'm showing you the gatefold. Magnificent album. Also finished very high on my end of year list. So let me, so it's a gatefold that is very worth it. Look at that. How good's that? And then they didn't waste the interior either. I think the interior might be even better. Have a look at that. I mean, come on fucking awesome look at that so yeah that was uh metal blade boy some of these metal ba blade releases they really spare no expense you get such a good product it's just wow so good next the band with one of the longest band names in the world most of the time it just gets in shortened to expert x Ex Imperatus, I can't even say the shortened word, Ex Imperatus. I talked a fair bit about this last year, this album. They are from Belarus. Started out as just pretty much straight up death metal. Now they're sort of moved into progressive death metal. I mean, I don't need to, I, I'm, I'm only gonna ruin that with words. All right, so here we go. Let me see if I can hold this properly. Right, there's the band name. That's how long it is. So if you type into uh, like a Google search, XM Peritus, and you look up their first album, uh, it's one of the longest titles of albums you've ever seen. Uh, they shortened this one. The, sh the title is a fair bit shorter. But anyway, there's the artwork. How good's that? Outstanding. And uh, oh, here we go. We're up to the last one. As I say, I had lots that I could have shown. Just lots. I mean, I could have made this video three hours long. As it is, it's probably going to be a little bit long. But hell, I haven't done one for a while. Uh, this band is called uh, Aetheria Consentia. Look at that. Uh, now, this band is a black metal band. Very atmospheric avant-garde progressive and one of these part of this wave of black metal bands sort of in the last five to seven years that have gone down the sci-fi path so they're black metal but instead of it being all about evil and satan and horror it's there's a lot of them now doing science fiction themed stuff uh and they're one of the bands they are from the greek or french france they're from france Look at that. Now, also, let me take quickly take the records out. Yeah, I've gone to keeping the the records not in the gatefold. Um, I don't know why. I've, when I'm having the plastic sleeve, I just feel it doesn't hurt the spine of the gatefold, putting them in the middle rather than the gatefold. Uh, bad pictures in the gatefold. And when you open it up to the back, then you get the full wrap around. And then look at that guy there. Yeah, I don't even know what the hell it is, but yeah. I mean, how good is that? Doesn't get much better than that, right? Really, really, really good stuff. So, uh, thanks to Andy Cloudy Milder for getting me back doing videos again. Quick shout out to the Aaron the Metal Theologian who got me going all... Uh, my first video and keeps uh, encouraging me to get back and do more and a little quick shout out to Pete Pardo and the gang over there at Sea of Tranquility who I love and I uh, hope you're all doing well I'll try if I can I can't promise but I'll try and get back to doing more videos and uh, catch you all soon thanks for watching